Hi and welcome to this third video on conditional probability from the year two stats course and in this video we are looking at tree diagrams. We've already done stuff in the previous video on Venn diagrams and two-way tables. This one is tree diagrams and the subtle distinction here is that in the first one it was about a single event where there's two categories we're interested. For example if we pick if we had a, uh, an example from the previous video we're picking somebody who was a footballer and a cricketer so they could be both things at the same time. With tree diagrams, we're talking about two event probability. So we've got one thing happening followed by another thing happening. So that's the distinction between those two things. So let's have a look at how conditional probability works on those. And here is a standard GCSE question. We've got um, some balls being taken. And in this case, it's colour, it's noted, then it's replaced. So these are independent. So it means we haven't got any conditional probabilities. But what I'm doing is just using this to illustrate kind of essentially the set notation for a tree diagram. So there's our tree diagram, as we might expect. Probability they're both red would be that value there. Okay, nothing new or particularly exciting about that one. But let's just have a look at what that means in terms of our notation. So the probability they're both red is going to be the probability my first ball is red and the probability my second ball is red. So we've got the intersection of those two events going on because that bit there is the and part. And we know that for independent events, we know that probability of A in section B is just the two things multiplied together. And we can see that happening because we know when we're using a tree diagram, we multiply going along the branches. So for this particular diagram, we've got probability R1 intersection R2 is R1 times R2. So it's just a case of just thinking about how R intersection notation, our more formal probability notation works on our tree diagram. If we have a look at the probability that the balls are different colours, what we're looking at is two options. We've got this branch here, R1, Y2, and we've got Y1, R2. So what does that mean in terms of our probability notation? So we've got the intersection of those two events, and it's an OR, so that means we're going to be adding the two Come the outcome from the two branches together. So we're looking at, at that. And there's our calculation. And there we go, answer 30 over 64. So again, that was just almost like a mental warm, just getting us thinking about tree diagrams and probability notation with intersections and unions and, and that kind of stuff. Let's now have a look at the same situation, but this time we've changed it slightly and we're just saying two balls are being taken. And we know that when we're dealing with that situation, we're not saying we're taking them at the same time. We're saying we're taking them one after the other. So we've got two events. One ball is coming out, have a look at it, and then another ball comes out. So the colour of the first ball is going to affect how many of each colour are left in the bag. So it's going to affect the probabilities. So these are dependent events. So this is where our conditional probability is coming in. And again, those are the values that you, you know and are able to calculate when it comes to the probability tree. So if you just quickly have a look at the one here, we originally had eight balls in the bag. One ball's come out, so there's seven balls left. The ball that came out was red, so now there's four red balls out of the seven left in the bag, and so on and so forth. But I've got to be honest, I'm more interested really in the tree when it comes to what does that mean in terms of our probability notation. So let's have a look at the tree now, and just instead of putting the probabilities on there, let's just put our notation on there. So the first branches, probability you get a red, probability you get a yellow from our first pack pick. And then let's have a look at this top branch here, for example. So we've got the probability of getting a red here, sorry, given that the first one was a red. So that's probability of red given red. So these second branches are going to be our conditional probabilities, the ones that change as a result of what's happened first. So probability of red given red. This one here, probability yellow, given it was a red first of all. And then for our bottom pair of branches, we've now got the probability of red, given that the first one was yellow and the probability of yellow, given the first one was yellow. Now, if we just have a look at the second branch, I'm talking about this one here, we want red and yellow, so R1 and Y2. And so we know that we multiply. So what we've got, that thing there, is going to be probability of red times by the probability of yellow given red is the probability of red intersection Y, and hopefully that's looking familiar, and it'll look even more familiar if I do a simple bit of rearranging. And there again is our conditional probability formula. Now it's worth probably noting at this time as well that if these things weren't conditional, this thing here, probability of yellow given red, well, if it didn't matter if we had got replacements, then it wouldn't matter that it was given red on the first ball, so this would just be saying probability of yellow, so we've just got probability red 
times by probability yellow, probability red, intersection yellow. So you can see the same thing is still working um, for our independent events. But the purpose of that slide was just to illustrate that on your probability tree, it's these second branches that are now that become the given things. And if you're working on a tree diagram, then it or by default it kind of spits out the uh, prob the conditional probability formula, same as before. So finally, all we've got to do now really is look at how we might see this appearing in uh, an exam style question. So we've got um, a factory with three machines. The machines make widgets with uh, different proportions of widgets getting made on each machine, and we've got different proportions that are defective coming out of each machine. If you want to pause it to read that properly, please do. But what I'm going to do is just jump straight to the tree diagram. There it is. So again, if you need to pause and have a quick look about where all those numbers are coming from, essentially all we've done there is taken the information out of that great big chunk of text and turned it into a diagram. My brain struggles to cope with this. It's more than happy looking at that. Now I can see what's going on. Right. We want, given it's defective, find the probability it was not made by Z. So not made by Z means it's got to come from X or Y. So we're going to need X or Y. And given it's defective, so that means that's what we're going to need. So a little bit of careful thought about what we're actually looking to work out. So the probability it's come from X or Y, given that it's defective. So let's go from there and have a look at our formula. And there it is. So we've got the intersection of the union with the fact it's defective over the probability it's defective. And again, easier, I think, to think uh, more carefully about the den denominator first. We're interested in the proportion of um, items that are defective. So we're interested in the defective items. So let's have a think about where they are on my tree diagram. So let's have a look. Defective items, there, 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 there you go, three branches. And we know we're going to do some multiplying. So there is our three values. So the probability we're going to get a defective item coming from this, these three machines is simply that, 0.038. So that's our denominator sorted. Let's now have a look at x union y intersection. So it's got to have come from x or y, which means it's got to be this branch up here or this one here. So that thing that again, for me, this starts looking a bit crazy and confusing. This makes more sense for me. I'm kind of very much a visual person when it comes to this. I do like a diagram. So we've got that. So add those two probabilities together, 0.31. That's going to be our numerator. So let's put it in there and then just do the divide. And so there we go. Uh, the probability it's defective, given it was not made by Z, is 0.816. And there you go. Conditional probability, tree diagram, all done and sorted. Happy days.